using this example eight layer stack up design let's go through some of the finer details of inputting stack up data uh, to make sure we're getting accurate results so on this stack up I have outer and inner routing layers on the outer layers to achieve 60 ohms uh, a 6 mil trace is necessary and on the inner layers a 7.4 mil trace will give me 60 ohms now that is just putting in kind of the basic stuff into the stack up editor it's really important to talk to your manufacturer and make sure that you're putting in the right data to get an accurate trace width for your target impedance and one of the first things that you can look at is getting accurate dielectric numbers so it's important to uncheck this calculate ER automatically so that you can put in the right data on each individual layer. So if we go back to our basic tab, these five mil dielectrics will probably have a dielectric, dielectric constant more like 3.8. And similarly, the 10 mil dielectrics, probably about 4.2. The 20 mils are probably higher around 4.5. And you can see just by putting in those different numbers, now on the outer layers, I'm getting 63.3 ohms for a target impedance. And on the inner layers, still getting 60 ohms. So we would have been pretty good on the inner layers. But another thing to keep in mind is that there are different dielectrics on the, the metal layers themselves. So on the outer layer, we have a conformal coating of solder mask that occupies the the metal part of that layer and on the inner layers as the layers are pressed together you tend to get a more resin rich area around the traces so that dielectric constant is going to be much lower since it's more resin than glass so I have found that 3.2 tends to be a pretty good number for those metal layers and if you can see that uh, we input there and that changed our impedance numbers slightly for the, the inner layer uh, since now we have a different dielectric constant on those metal layers. If, we're, if we compare that to the bottom half of the stack up where I haven't changed any of the dielectric numbers, uh, you can see where on the outer layers before where I thought I was getting 60.2 ohms, I'm now actually getting 63.3 ohms. That's a significant difference. One other thing to keep in mind is the actual manufactured shape of the traces. So if we go over to the manufacturing tab and set up our technologies appropriately, uh, that'll help guide us in uh, selecting those geometries correctly. So outer layers are typically prepreg alternating core and prepreg throughout the stack up. So I have three cores in this eight layer stack up. And if I shrink down my surface roughness cells for now, uh, you can see that for uh, the trace shape, I have two columns here, one for etch factor and one for narrow side. Now the etch factor is described here in the hint it's basically the amount of trapezoiding or width reduction on one end of the trace that you'll have. And a uh, typical value is uh, one mil per one ounce copper or half mil for half ounce copper. And that's how we get this 0.741 etch factor. And it's important in your stack up design to make sure you know which side is going to be the narrow side because that's going to affect your impedance. So Typically, the uh, wider side is going to be against the core, uh, except on outer layers, it's usually on the outside of the board. But you're typically going to have a wider part of the trace against the core because that's where the etching solution is in contact the least. So you get this trapezoidal trace shape uh, with the core side always being wider so that means the narrow side is going to be on the top of this trace and on the bottom of this trace for this core top and then bottom and then we basically just keep alternating top and bottom throughout this the stack up and then the outer layer is going to be the bottom on the bottom layer top on the top layer 
And we can see what that looks like if we check this box to enable trapezoidal trace shapes. So here we can see it's trapezoiding with the outer region of the, of the trace being thinner. And here the bottom side is going to be thinner. And that's because right above it is a core. Same down here. The core is, is just below these traces. So that's where the wider side of the trace is. And if we go back to our basic tab, we can see that our impedance have, have changed again. So our initial guess on the inner layers wasn't too far off. Uh, we're getting around 61 ohms impedance now, whereas before we were getting uh, 60 ohms. And then uh, on the outer layers, it is a pretty significant difference. Now we're getting 64.2 ohms. And this is important for, for the outer layers. Uh, initially, we were targeting 60 ohms. So if we sent a, a board file to a manufacturer with 6 mil trace widths and we've spec'd an impedance requirement of 60 ohms, they're going to have to widen that trace quite a bit uh, to get that 60 ohms. So uh, 6.5 is enough. Let's go to 7. My seven's a little too much. 6.9, let's try. Oh, there you go, right at 60 ohms. So your manufacturer would have had to have widened that trace by almost a mil uh, to hit the target impedance. And that's pretty important because if, you're, if you have some, some minimum spacings uh, on, your, on your design and you've just shrunk those minimum spacings by a mil, uh, or half a mil to, to widen this trace on either side, then uh, you may run into other manufacturing issues. So it's very important to talk to your manufacturers, make sure that you're putting in accurate, very accurate data uh, to, to make sure you're getting the right impedance targets. Uh, not to mention the improved accuracy you'll get on your signal integrity and uh, timing simulations.